The beautiful game known as soccer has a particular meaning to different people around the world. Many play recreationally, whether it is at the local park, open field, or even in their very own backyard. However, for people like Frank Twanaboa, it's more serious than that. It's a lifestyle, a passion, and most importantly, a dream to reach the next level. A dream to become a professional soccer player. Very loyal survivor. His resiliency. Tremendous talent. Great soccer player. My name is Frank Twinaboa. Born in Ghana, but raised in the Bronx, Twinaboa went through a childhood without soccer being his main priority. Instead, he played basketball throughout middle school. Soccer was a side activity that he just played for fun. That all changed when he moved to Pensalkin, New Jersey. Pensalkin High School was Frank's next destination. Coming in as a freshman, Frank was a shy teenager that needed a place to express his personality. That place was in the world of sports. Frank decided to try out for the high school's soccer team since his height was an issue for playing basketball. Boy, did he make the right decision. English teacher Thomas Honeyman was the boys soccer coach at the time. He knew right away Frank was something special the first time he set foot on the pitch. When he, when he came back in whatever it was, 2004 or five, um, his ability to strike a ball at, at the age of 13, I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how hard it was. And that, that's some, one thing when you, know, when you said, what is one thing that sticks out in my mind? His ability to strike a ball as fluently, as effortlessly as anybody I've come across. Um, his ability to put a, drive a ball 50 yards on somebody's foot is another one, with either foot as well, and just break people down. After his freshman year, a new coach would replace Honeyman. Billy Snyder, a chemistry teacher at Pensacola High School, would take over, later becoming the Courier Post Coach of the Year. Snyder bonded with Frank, becoming his mentor, and continues to be to this day. The relationship with Frank and I is unique. Uh, it started as a player and a coach. Uh, Frank, as a sophomore uh, coach, actually was my first year coaching uh, at the high school level. So as a sophomore, I got to coach Frank, and then it really grew from there, watching and learning Frank both on and off the field, and then it went more to a, a mentor type of situation. And then even after high school, as he was graduating, watching what he was going to be able to do with his life, it probably turned almost into a father Son relationship. Snyder, like Honeyman, knew Frank was something special. Over his years as coach at Pensalkin, Snyder analyzed Frank's game and still is astonished with his talent. Characteristics Frank possesses that makes him different. One is his vision. He, he sees things before they happen. I don't know how he does it. Um, he, know, he just has a knack of knowing what's coming and what people are doing. Uh, the game seems to slow down for him. I've always said that Watching Frank, he has the ability to see the game as if he's standing on the, on the rooftop or, or standing up in the stands and he can see space and he can see where the ball belongs before he ever gets it and before it even goes to where it's supposed to go. His vision is tremendous. He, he just sees the game. Frank went on to make soccer relevant at Pensalkin High School, putting Pensalkin on the map, finishing the season with an 11-6-1 and one record. In the playoffs his senior year, he led his team to almost knocking off the number one team in South Jersey, Washington Township, in the second round of playoffs. His play attracted interest from many universities. William Patterson University caught his eye. Brian Woods, head coach of WPU soccer, was Frank's club team coach during high school. His club team was match fit. Snyder was the first to introduce Woods about Frank at the time. He's like, nah, my team. I said, S -s stop it. I said, I'm telling you, I haven't called you in four or five years, I have a kid that you need to come see play. So he goes, well, I'm coaching under 16. I said, well, he's 15. He goes, I'm telling you, my team is loaded. I said, whatever, let me bring the kid up. So we brought him up and he played. I remember sitting in the chair and at the end he came over and he goes, I think we could probably find something, like maybe we could work it in. I said, I told you. At MatchFit, Woods loved Frank's attitude as well as his gameplay. His desire, I mean, he wants to win. And that's probably his greatest trait and attribute that he has is that he wants to win. He wants to be a part of it. He wants to be a part of the winning. He wants to have the, everything surrounding uh, the team around him. He wants to be that guy. 
uh, which is probably his greatest trait. Um, he, he has ability, obviously his shot is great. He has good uh, ability on the ball. He could break people down off the dribble. However, Frank was unable to attend William Patterson, instead going to Mercer County Community College, a nationally ranked junior soccer college. While at Mercer, Frank played at the right outside midfield position, something he never played in high school. He showed that he could play anywhere, going on to become a Division I All-American in the National Junior College Athletic Association. Many have praised Frank for his special abilities on the soccer field, yet it's his decisions off the field that impresses his coaches. The easiest thing about Frank, as far as overcoming, is he never, ever, I can say this with 100% confidence, turned to the street as an option. Um, so many kids, when they're dealt that I have nothing, I have no money, I have no family support, would turn to a gang or would turn to the street. Um, never would I ever worry about that. And that's one of the biggest things I tell coaches, college coaches and club coaches, is when you deal with Frank, you don't have to worry about that. Frank now lives at a friend's house. My family actually took him in into our home. So he's now currently living with us for about a year or so. Twinaboa doesn't have much support when it comes to soccer, but he always appreciates the love and care from his family, especially from his uncle Peter. The situation has to be, he doesn't, okay, that's his situation. He has to overcome that. That's the, I keep using the example, that's the hand he was dealt. Um, he was given some gifts that some people would love to have. He would probably love to have some of the family situations of friends that he had. So. There's a give and a take, so he has to look at what he was given, uh, which is tremendous talent in soccer, and, and focus on that. When he was a young teenager, I think doing all the things that his aunt and uncle couldn't do, uh, drive him around, pick him up, um, uh, you know, uh, pro provide socks for him or whatever the case may be at, the, at that time. Uh, you know, I knew it was, his was a unique situation, like you said, uh, being pretty much, a, he's like a rogue warrior. Financially, it has been a struggle for Frank. The simple things, such as eating and transportation to his soccer games and practices, have been an ongoing challenge in his life. The NJ Transit, something Frank became used to, becoming his main source of transportation. No matter how much Frank struggled financially, he always remained positive. He doesn't see things, he doesn't see a bump in the road as a mountain. He sees it as a bump in the road, he's got to get over it. Uh, sometimes he doesn't get over it, but he, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to bring him down. Frank keeps moving forward. I think that's a, uh, probably the only way that I can put it. You know, he doesn't allow any of the hardships that he's incurred to, to keep him down. Certainly if you uh, let the, the burdens of, of life and, the, and the, the difficulties that life presents many young people, if you let it hold you down, it'll keep you down but Frank keeps moving forward. Where there are struggles, there are accomplishments to overcome the negative situations. In Frank's case, he has received such awards like South Jersey's Player of the Year, All-State, All-South Jersey, and All-Conference during his senior year at Pensalkin. He has won several trophies and awards as a member of his club teams at Spirit United, as well as Match Fit Academy. Frank has also been featured in top newspapers of the South Jersey area. He has been recognized for his game-winning goals, his pivotal role as a native of Ghana, being named as a Courier Post South Jersey Player of the Year, and his strive towards the pros. Currently, Frank is working out and staying in shape, never knowing when that next opportunity will arrive. He would weight train again when, after everyone's gone, when the games are over, when all the other students have gone home and had dinner, Frank would, would stay and, and weight train. As for jobs, Frank has started working as a soccer trainer, training young children, helping them to develop their skills. So I try to teach the little kids to follow my steps and trying to get better themselves. It's not all about just kicking it, it's all about reading the game, learning every day, um, trying to improve yourself every day, and go out and have fun. When I asked my interviewees which professional reminds them of Frank Twinaboa, they all responded. It's his countryman, Michael Essien. Michael Essien. Michael Essien. However, one disagreed. I have to say Lionel Messi, just because if you ever play with Frank, you know what I'm talking about. He just, he fools around you. He mags you. Frank's favorite player is Messi. He has some things that no I, nobody has 
as a soccer player. He's very, very, very skillful uh, and committed to playing. So that, that makes him better than anybody i ever seen play. And he hopes to play with or against him someday. Frank has the talents of becoming a professional soccer player, but getting there is the challenge. No matter what, he is never going to stop chasing his goal. Time will tell for this 20-year-old sensation.